Hey everybody, it's Triple L coming in to talk about Shuko Tensei or Jobless Reincarnation episode. Oof, I think we're at five. It must be five because that's where we would be for the volumes. Anyway, yeah, hey guys. So, of course, top moment breakdown. We're going to be going through the scenes. I'm going to be talking about what I enjoyed from the scenes and also any points of value here. Now, for this episode, we ended up doing quite a little bit. So, this episode is pretty much how Rudy got a job. He met the rest of his noble family, he got to meet Eris. He got that holy crap moment beat out of him um, and then we had that entire little kidnapping plot that occurred and we understand what went down by the end of the episode um, overall i do want to say uh you know the brutality in this episode uh, i think it's good not many isekai have it uh you know comparatively there's overlord to match it in terms of brutality that's the only other one i can really think of right now to match but yeah no um i think still a beautiful anime I enjoyed what it was doing. Um, I can't really think of any negative part for the episode. Like even the thing with Rudy here, like Rudy, like one of the main things that you want to take away from this episode is that this is the episode where Rudy realized how real things can get. Because when you look at what he was doing, he felt he had the, uh, the luxury to continue doing his lesson when they were in a dangerous situation. That kind of removal from the stress it ultimately was his undoing. It came crashing down when he like saw all the blood in front of, in front of his hands. Uh, so really, I think there's a nice story going on here. This is a story of how Rudy, in a sense, lost his innocence. And also the story of how he and Eris became close. Anyway, let's go into the top moments breakdown. We're starting with pretty much a scene. The letter scene. So this is the whole segment at the beginning where Rudy was reading. I enjoyed it. I think the letter scene was really important. Just very quickly, the things that came out for the scene that make it so good. Uh, we learned about Ghislaine's ability or lack of ability to understand jokes and the stuff about Paul and Ghislaine's history. So what I thought was really interesting here is that twice we saw her getting worked up and then, you know, we had that very strange like, oh, right. Like it, it's kind of a when you see that you understand that the character maybe is not the most social, doesn't understand social cues very well. Um, and that is, again, indicated by how she reacts to the jokes and immediately backs off. Um, this kind of thing, she is more animalistic in that sense, in that when she perceives that there is no real threat behind the word, it's like, you know, it's not, um, it doesn't have the lingering sentimentality of humanity. Uh, beyond that, I legitimately liked how Paul's game came in here, with even Rudy pointing it out, where it's at a situation where... You know, this woman's getting upset because she's he, she's being called the muscle brain. And actually, the muscle brainness is, is exactly what allows the misunderstanding of the jokes. Um, but I enjoy how when it's brought up, she just kind of looks off to the side. She doesn't deny anything there. Um, and I do enjoy how Paul's playerness is what ultimately like disarmed her for that little moment. Um, when she scoffs at that comment of her and Paul's history together... It's it's a really interesting moment. Honestly, I really enjoy it. It just shows that there is legitimately something that she appreciates with the guy. And of course, I loved her mentioning to send that letter to Zenith because it's screw Paul, right? If he's going to be playing around like that, he's saying that she belongs to him, send it off to Zenith. He has it coming. He deserves it. The, the guy's a regular old scumbag when it comes to the women. Uh, but no, that segment with Ghislaine was really good. It gave us an idea of her character and added a little bit of nuance that... You know, as scummy as Paul is, it's not all bad for the people he's involved with. And at the end of the day, um, they're friends, right? At the end of the day, she's taking on his son to go work at the Capitol. The other segment within the letter scene that was really important was Paul calling out Rudy depending on Sylphie. So at this point, what Paul is trying to avoid is a codependent relationship. Ideally, he doesn't want Rudy to be in a situation where he can't work without Sylphie because that would not be the best situation to be in. And that's actually a really interesting lesson that Paul would want to give at this point in time. Um, but yeah, I think this makes sense. I think separating Rudy for both of their, uh, for birth, sorry, for both of their benefits is a good move. Um, and finally, the last big detail is that Ghislaine is a sword king. We find that out um, during Paul saying that she can train him. Um, so we know that Paul is advanced in the various styles. And then we have Ghislaine being a sword king. And we see just how strong she is by the end of the episode. Where she's ripping up some of the pavement with just the air force of her slash. So interesting. We got a new term. I'm excited. I want to see more. My next top moment 
was the Eris beat down and I'm gonna have it just cycling here man cuz like holy crap moly this boy coming in there oh man that was amazing I really liked Rudy's initiative with don't slap me or I'm gonna slap you like in any other case you know maybe that would have worked but like this is this is why you don't fight fire with fire like literally if you brought a fire to a firefight all you're gonna do is make a bigger bonfire and that's exactly what happened with air it's like holy crap moly man uh nah man that was a wicked awesome beatdown it's interesting though that rudy didn't get that much damage not really what you ultimately saw there when he runs away is that Eris's fists are ultimately light that's what you should really take away from that but oh man that was really good really good character establishment like Eris is a little monster um and it's cool to see that so well depicted um, my next top moment was a little line when rudy said that he did not want to go home because paul would laugh at him i think this is probably one of the good things about paul being such a scummy guy in general um because at the end of the day you know paul and rudy do have a good relationship they have a relationship where Rudy can bear to scoff at Paul and point out his shortcomings. So, you know, this one is cool because Rudy, he sees that aspect of Paul and he doesn't want to be laughed at. We're using the negative aspect of a character to force a character to try to be better because they want to avoid the... Uh, how would you say it? is it like the childish nature you know they want it, the pettiness they want to avoid the pettiness i like the weaponization of paul's pettiness or negative qualities as something that ultimately motivates rudy to do better uh paul is the kind of guy that rudy may be motivated to be like i want to treat all my women better because i don't want to be like paul um i think this is good maybe negative reinforcement maybe that's what we could call it but yeah no nah, man um I, I really like that line and i do like that whole little se segment with the bear uh is he a baron? But you know, um, Eris's father. Anyway, the next one is this guy's face. So what are you going to do as a viewer? When you see this, I'm just thinking this is going to be important. There's whatever it's going to, something's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen. This guy's a dick. Uh, that was the dick pan. That's pretty much showing us that, hey guys, keep an eye on this guy because something bad's about to happen. It's going to have to do with him. Um, and ultimately in the context of the episode, what that face was there to do, that scene, was just to say, this guy overheard the plan about kidnapping Eris, and he thought, well, I can take advantage of that. He was the guy on the inside that could ruin the whole situation. As, as we find out, he just really hates Eris. They all hate Eris. Like, I don't think anyone really wants to work with Eris aside from Ghislaine. Um, next top moment, or next top sequence, the kidnapping sequence, and ultimately the misunderstanding that Rudy had about that whole situation. So fundamental to understand, like I said before, the guy took advantage of the whole kidnapping situation occurring and decided to, that was the best opportunity to make some cash. So within the sequence, there's quite a few highlights. One was Rudy's laughing face. Uh, this was specifically when Eris was waking up. It was just funny because this is where Rudy is still feeling good. It's just funny that his laugh had come out. He looked very creepy. I really liked it. I thought it was a really nice touch. And when we're talking about really nice touches. If you look at Rudy in the scenes, he's winking repeatedly. And he continues winking for a very long time. As if saying, that was when he still thought that the whole thing was, you know, a joke. Um, so I like that they actually went that far to actually show him winking so consistently. Um, the next highlight was Eris being fully beaten, fully broken down. Her teeth are in a puddle of blood. I think that was really important to show. Because Mushoku Tensei is ultimately a show about harsh reality and you need to show the harsh reality and he, this is where you have to really look at that sequence and compare it to when Eris beat down Rudy. Rudy runs away and he doesn't have damage. Eris thought the stuffing beat out of her and that just ultimately goes to remind you Eris is a child. Eris's fists do not have the weight behind someone who's taking her seriously or someone who's actually bigger than her. Um, this mentality about the differences in Eris' size and how this kind of stuff work. I do think gets played up a little bit more in the rhetoric of the novel, but don't quote me on that. I have to just look back. But Eris does have a rhetoric that revolves around understanding the size of the people and especially understanding Rudy's size relative to herself. Um, so I do want, again, just be emphasized the Eris scene is meant to be compared to the lack of damage that Eris did to Rudy, even though the intensity of the beatdowns 
were roughly the same. Um, it's just there to show the difference between a child and an adult. Now, the big thing here is when Eris is fully broken down and beaten, she ultimately says a very critical thing. She's going to tell her grandfather on them. So her grandfather is obviously a noble. But imagine being in a situation where the person you're going to tell is a guy that we haven't even seen in the in the story yet. Uh, what that tells you is that Eris is a grandfather's girl. She is ultimately probably spoiled by her grandfather and probably really loves her grandfather. She probably considers she probably has her grandfather in higher regard than she has her actual father. Um, but it's it was really telling that in her most dark moment, she's calling on her grandfather's help. Um, next top moment or next highlight within the sequence was Rudy's creepy laugh when he gets hit. So this was just really good because when you see the creepy laugh, that might be Rudy's current um, coping mechanism. It might be a holdover from his past life. I don't think that creepy laugh was intentional, but it creeped the person out. I do believe that in a the novel there was a little bit more introspection on that laugh. But I, I haven't read this part of the novel for this episode just yet, so I don't really remember. Anyway, um, this was ultimately good because it, it gave him the time to run away. Um, next highlight was the escape and Rudy still using the moment as a teaching moment. Um, so really ballsy, right? Really ballsy to play chicken like this um, to give Eris such an ultimatum. Now, mind you, you know, Eris probably is the kind of person that would learn best in crisis or it probably the kind of person that needs this kind of impetus behind her to make her actually behave, uh, but still really ballsy. And we have to remember this moment is there only so that the moment where Rudy realizes how serious things were is more pronounced. What you should really be taking away from that last sequence when he's testing Eris still is that he's not taking the situation. It hasn't fully reached him there yet. Anyway, other thing I want to point out is that Rudy needs to do chants for healing magic. And as we saw later, he doesn't need to do chants for fire or water or earth. Uh, what most likely happens is that since healing magic is so abstract, Rudy probably can't conceptualize it as well as he can for the magic earth and fire. Um, and that's probably why he has to do chants. Uh, next top moment was Eris going along with Rudy out of fear and her lack of reading vulnerability. I think this was definitely one of the moments where Eris realized how far she had screwed herself, especially when Rudy tells her, I'm not your tutor. Um, I think she definitely like felt the fire on that particular moment, and it's important that we knew that this was happening. It's actually really interesting that a noble's daughter doesn't know how to read, but that just, again, paints the situation that Eris is too much of a wild child. After that, we go into the whole sequence where we are back in town and Eris has been kidnapped. Everything is being revealed. We understand what happened. These guys are going to take her. My favorite highlight from that whole sequence was Rudy saying, you can't, you can't buy Dere. That comment was amazing. Um, and obviously the joke is, Rudy spent all his time playing dating Sims. He probably knows the Sundere archetype. But what he's saying is that, yo, I got Eris on that Sun Sun power right now. I need the Dere. You can't buy the Dere. He knew that if he saved her in this moment, this girl is going to be Sun Dere for him. Um, and that's exactly what we got. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, that was a wonderful moment. I love that he said it out loud. Um, next top moment was Eris being won over by the fireworks. So the way the anime premises this is that this is the moment that she was really won over by the beauty of the magic. Again, you can tell that from the way they animated her eyes. Next top moment was, of course, Ghislaine's arrival. Her seeing the explosion and coming in like a storm looked really good. Really critical moment. Um, this happened when the guy had thrown the sword. I thought it was also good to know that the water god style has sword throwing techniques. And again, it was a good demonstration of Ghislaine's power. Next up moment was Rudy getting his first taste of how serious this whole thing was and how fragile his life was. Of course, I already talked about how important this was earlier. It's just good when you have the buildup and then you have the sudden stop, the sudden um, reversal, the sudden um, slapping of the hand telling Rudy like, hey, take this seriously because next time you might not get as lucky. It was good. And finally, top, the last top moment was, of course, Eris accepting Rudy and having her or him. Yeah, having him call her Eris and not Eris Sama. Um, that was just the bow on the story. We started from a spot where Eris was not into it and we ended at a spot where Eris was into it. That was a nice, conclusive story. I'm really happy they were able to get all that within one episode. So overall, interesting episode i really enjoyed it you can definitely see the storyline in here you can make a short story out of this just a character arc there 
um, in the background, we had Eris's father being introduced, and we have an understanding of um, his disposition and all that. I think this is going to be good. I think this is going to be a new chapter of Yuri's life, and I think it's going to be interesting to watch. Overall, I'm really happy with the episode. Not my favorite. I think the last episode is still my favorite. Uh, episode 4 and 5 together, probably my... Actually, is it 4 and 5? One second. I, I, I already know I, I messed up here. Right, this is episode 5. Episode 4 and 3 are still my favorites. Uh, but this is a solid groundwork for establishing how these two came together. Guys, let me know what you thought down below. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely great day.